Well, everybody, I'd like to welcome you to Bloomingdale and the former McMillan sand filtration site. Um, there's so much I could say. I'm overwhelmed and excited. We have a lot of uh, longtime residents here, uh, new residents, and we're looking at the future um, McMillan Recreation Center, yet to be named. Um, but just to give you a brief history, um, this site was complete, uh, completed in 1905. Um, at the time, it was uh, the first site um, in the country that converted from chemical to slow water filtration and helped end the typhoid epidemic in the city as well as taking care of several other diseases. Um, since then, uh, there was a beautiful fountain installed in 1912. Um, that has been all over the city. Um, the site was decommissioned um, in 1986, but it was actually closed to the public in 1941 or so with World War II. Um, it sat here waiting for a long time, um, but in 1987, uh, it was granted to the city from the federal government. Um, at that time, it was supposed to be um, developed and we're sitting here in 2023 and we're looking about uh, we're about a year out so I think we're what it's about 36 years or so um, but we're getting there uh, you may remember 87 was Doug Williams Timmy Smith um, great great time for a Washington football team I think that's right around the corner uh, <laughs> And maybe, maybe they're coming back to the city. We'll see. Um, but on that note, um, we're incredibly excited. We thank the mayor for what she's doing. I did want to mention um, Jill Stucker. Uh, he's been working for the mayor's office on this for about nine years, working with the community. Um, he's done just a phenomenal job. Um, we're so excited. We're going to have a pool. We're going to have a six-acre park. We're going to have a playground. Splash Park. Uh, after this, on the private side, we're going to have a grocery store, restaurant, retail, medical facilities. It's just incredible. Um, so thank you, Mayor Bowser, and everybody in the community that's been working on this. We're going to get it right, and we're going to open this part next spring. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Let's give the commissioner a big round of applause. Thank you uh, for your history. I want to acknowledge all the ANC commissioners who are present, um, Robert Branham, Carla Lewis. I also want to acknowledge all the neighbors who are here. Let's hear it for the neighbors. Uh, and all of my team who are who is here, our, our DEMPED team, our DEOEE, -E, our Historic Preservation, our Department of Buildings, DPR. Give them all a big round of applause. <laughs> this is indeed um, a momentous occasion and one that has been long in the making. I literally have um, passed by, grown up around, walked around, driven around this uh, parcel my entire life. I know Councilmember McDuffie will tell you even more. Uh, you probably heard me say one of the favorite quotes from my mom I like to use, that when she would drive past McMillan, she would say, when are they going to do something about that place? Um, and I reminded her that the day was now me uh, and that we were doing something about that place. But more than that, we want to be able to make sure that this place becomes, again, uh, a part of the community and that it serves the community. Uh, so this journey, uh, we broke ground. Uh, I won't even get into its, its long history. The district purchased this land, Commissioner, 36 years ago. 
Uh, and it has been on our list of things to, to get back into productive use since I became mayor in 2015. Uh, in fact, in 2016 was when we first broke ground on um, McMillan. Uh, and as it happens sometimes with projects that have some bumps in the road, they get better. Just get, they just keep getting better. Uh, and so people who want to make sure that we have a beautiful park and recreation center, we're going to have six acres of park. Isn't that good? Uh, you've already heard that this uh, community center um, will serve this neighborhood with all of the latest state-of-the-art in, in recreation uh, and swimming. Uh, you also know that we need more affordable housing in Washington, D.C., and that's exactly what we will be able to build here uh, at McMillan. Uh, we were also recently talking to retailers, national retailers, about their interest, and we've been talking about McMillan for a number of years, and now it's ripe. Um, it's ripe for retailers to take interest and to sign up uh, to be here. And so I am uh, just really excited that the district has stayed the course, that we're going to honor our historical past, we're going to honor our past and all of the historically rich structures on this site, but also honor our future by making sure we can serve the recreational purposes, affordable housing, medical, and job needs of our city. So I am looking forward to marking this occasion uh, and being back for many occasions to come. And we have a we have a history in this city that we can look back on, on big parcels that were once federal parcels that we have developed. Uh, you can look at the wharf, you can look at Walter Reed, which is coming up uh, as we speak, and also uh, St. Elizabeth's and the St. Elizabeth's campus. And so McMillan will stand as another large parcel that we get to plan uh, and develop and make sure ser serves contemporary Washington, D.C. Uh, so with that, I want to invite um, Council Member Kenyon McDuffie, uh, the at-large council member, the former Ward 5 council member, and McMillan neighbor. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. Um, I, I really appreciate you bringing some energy to this, Mayor Bowser, because this is indeed an exciting day. Um, this is a day that a lot of people have been waiting for, um, uh, literally for uh, uh, more than a generation. Um, you've heard the history by uh, Commissioner Rapp, and I want to recognize him and the other commissioners that are here, uh, Lewis, uh, all the former commissioners that are here, Branham, and, and uh, Diane Barnes is here as well, civic leadership is here. Terry Janine Quinn is here. Um, these are all folks who have been actively involved in this process uh, over the years. In fact, I've been actively involved in this process um, even before I was a council member. Uh, the mayor alluded to it, but uh, my family's home uh, is right across the street, and it's a home that uh, my grandparents bought back in 1952, uh, not long after uh, the Supreme Court said that the federal government could no longer enforce racially restrictive covenants, and they were able to buy into this neighborhood. And they have uh, been waiting as my parents have been waiting, my kids now have been waiting to be able to access this site. And so I'm happy that today we can tell Mrs. Bowser that we are indeed doing something, Mayor Bowser. Absolutely. Y'all can clap for that. I mean, where's the energy? I mean, y'all hear this noise back here? This noise is delightful because we're going to get a community center with a pool, a six-acre park. We're going to get housing that meets the needs of uh, residents across the District of Columbia. Uh, we're going to get some retail that is in walking distance to our homes in this neighborhood. We're getting the things that we've been asking for for a really long time, and frankly, uh, it's what has been intended since the District of Columbia acquired this site for the purpose of economic development way back in 1987. And so uh, I'm indeed excited to be here. Um, to, to look forward to being able to access this and cut a ribbon, uh, Director Freeman, uh, Director Hunter, uh, making sure that uh, the des residents across the District of Columbia, not just in this community of Stronghold, Bloomingdale, Edgewood, Eckington, 
but residents across the District of Columbia uh, will be able to access this site and enjoy the amenities that the District of Columbia is investing in. And so uh, a neat, exciting day. I'm glad to be a part of it, even uh, as an at-large council member. And I'm also happy that uh, my War 5 colleague uh, has joined, and I think I'm going to welcome him up to the podium right now. Let's give a round of applause for Zachary Parker. Good morning, War 5. Um, this is indeed an exciting day. I, too, want to acknowledge War 5 leadership that is President ANC Civic Leadership. Uh, Mayor Bowser, thank you for being out here. Uh, I want to give it up to my predecessor, uh, Kenya McDuffie, now our at-large council member who for many years helped get us to this point. Um, and I'm hoping that I can build on that legacy to help shepherd uh, this project through the finish line. Uh, to our DEMPED, DPR, and other citywide agency leaders, I want to thank you also for being here. Um, it's not much more to say, but I am really excited uh, because what I am looking at behind me is a testament of many years and hours of community feedback and investment into this project. Uh, and I'm really excited that the first thing that to be delivered on this site is a community center recreational facility. Um, and I think that is what is at the heart of this community. Uh, when I look at these sand dunes or pillars, whatever they're called, uh, I'm thinking of around the ways that community will have a say in how those are used and preserved for future use. Um, I also am really excited uh, that direct district investment will mean that this community, uh, this entry point to Ward 5 that serves as a hub and a connective uh, tissue between Brookland and Stronghold and Bloomingdale and Fort Titan uh, will have a pool and a park and recreational place for our youth and seniors. I'm really excited that we will have, what, some hundred affordable senior homes uh, moving us closer not just towards our affordable housing goals but making sure that we're housing more of our most vulnerable and treasured residents. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, I'm really excited that we will continue to have community centered in the future design of this site. Now, with that said, uh, I want to make sure that the resources that we bring to the site are in service and of use to the community. So that's including the grocery store. That's including future businesses on this site. And I'm really uh, thankful that the development teams, all of them, um, have really been um, focused on that community-centered aspect. So for me, that is what Healthy Communities is all about, making sure we have a shared quality of living um, and that community is at the center. Now, so with that, I want to thank you all for being here. I'm really excited. Uh, to cut the ribbon, and I believe I have the honor of introducing uh, Director Hunter uh, so he can tell you all about the amazing things that this recreation uh, site will bring uh, to the War 5 community. So, Director. All right, good morning, everyone. Before I begin, I want to recognize the residents that have been pushing, advocating for productive use of this site for the past 36 years. Can you raise your hand? Raise your hand. We have a few of them here. Congratulations to you. This is really uh, a testament to your, uh, your hard work, your dedication, and commitment to seeing this through. Uh, next, I want to give a big round of applause to our Mayor Muriel Bowser for her grit, her resilience, uh, for really pushing to make this happen. Again, this has been discussed for the better part of the last 30 or 40 years, but our Mayor is delivering, so congratulations to you. Uh, again, my name is Delano Hunter, and I'm proud to serve as the director of the D.C. Department of General Services, also a proud Ward 5 resident that passes this site every day, twice a day sometimes. And I want to thank again Mayor Bowser for her unending dedication and tireless commitment to ensuring that this long-awaited project uh, has progressed, thus providing Ward 5 residents in a city with a facility, a park, and plaza that will enhance their quality of life, and provide access to much-needed amenities. So we thank you, Mayor Bowser, for your vision and for entrusting DGS to be a part of this monumental project. I'd like to thank Councilmember Parker and Councilmember McDuffie, uh, also Commissioner Rapp, for your staunch and continued advocacy on behalf of district residents. And I'm thrilled to be here today to celebrate progress on this phase of this redevelopment. So you might ask what will be here in 2024 a new 17,000 square foot community center, which will provide a multi-purpose community meeting room with the warming kitchen, fitness studio, an indoor pool with three lap lanes, and a learn to swim area and gallery space to display items celebrating the history of this site. Uh, but that's not it. The fun just doesn't 
stop with the indoor facility, we're really proud of the 6.2 acre park. And these investments are a big reason why DC for the third year in a row has been named by the Trust for Public Land as having the best park system. It's investments in our outdoor spaces, uh, which of course have been amplified during the pandemic. So let's talk about the 6.2 acre park. It'll have a large informal play area, a children's playground, a restored memorial fountain and Olmstead walk along with the perimeter of the site, which will incorporate uh, exercise stations. We'll have a plaza with splash pads surrounded by terrace seating, creating an amphitheater and a walking museum along with the gallery under the park that again will celebrate and tell the history of this historic site. Uh, so we didn't get here alone. It's been a team effort, and I like to thank those that have been a part of this, starting with the Gilbain construction team and many of the, the men and women that are here with us today. Let's give it up for Gilbain. Let's give it up for Quinn Evans Architects, if you can raise your hands if you're here. Let's give it up for Demped, raise your hands. And, of course, last but not least, uh, the hardworking men and women at DPR and my colleagues at DGS, the project managers. And also want to acknowledge the collaborative partnership with Vision McMillan Partners, a group comprised of EYA, Trammell Crow, Jaya Lynch, who are developing the private portion of the McMillan project. So again, Madam Mayor, we're pleased for this project and have good news because, of course, this also uh, has been a catalyst to economic development. So as of May 31st this year, 20 million has been contributed to CBEs, and this project has employed 187 <clears throat> district residents. Isn't that exciting? So, so much more to celebrate. We look forward to being here in the spring of 2024 to officially open this facility. And with that, I welcome the director of the DC Department of Parks and Recreation, and that's Steeny Freeman. All right, give it up. Wow, thank you, thank you, thank you, Madam Mayor, Council Members Parker and McDuffie. This is truly exciting. Commissioner Rapp, the historic um, context, that, context that you gave all of us. Um, I'm so happy, uh, Director Hunter, um, receiving this, um, and Deputy Mayor Keith Anderson, who then was the, uh, starting this project. So I'm truly excited about that, and I'm confident that Mayor Bowser, we're bringing it home for the residents. And so the new McMillan Center will be the crown jewel of Ward 5, as you heard from everyone. We know at DPR, we bring out the fun, but guess what? Fun is serious business. And Madam Mayor has been serious about putting investments so that we can have fun. And so we are grateful for this. The, um, I just can't wait for all the community amenities um, that Director Hunter has, has mentioned um, with the walking museum, the 6.2 green space. We love our green spaces. A beautiful view going up and down our North Capitol corridor. And we're just truly, truly excited about all the work that's gone into this project. At DPR, as I said, um, we have so many things that we're doing for our residents. We've just increased camp slots. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. We've added 1,000 additional camp slots. We heard you. We know that you want more of us, and we are poised to deliver more. Mayor Bowser has invested in our Rec for All grants, and we are working tirelessly with our um, Recreation for All, uh, Camp Riverview. We still have some slots. A thousand youth will be traveling to Scotland, Maryland. So if you have not, if you need spaces, please visit us at our website. And with that, I have the distinct pleasure of bringing back Madam Mayor to the podium to lead and signing the beam. Thank you, Thinny. Um So I hope everybody heard the director well. We have lots of opportunities to get our young people engaged, summer school, summer camp, or summer jobs, right? All of those things. And they're either free or low cost or we pay the kids. That's not bad. Free, low cost, or we pay you to participate. Um, so please, whether you have a young person or not, you, you have one in your circle. So make sure that they are engaged. I did want to say um, that I don't want to start anything with Turkey Thicket or Edgewood or Arboretum. So this is going to be one of the crown jewels in Ward 5. 
because there are many outstanding um, recreation centers here. Uh, so with that, I think, um, are there any questions, press questions? Yes, Martin. Um, can I get to an off topic or do you want me to start on topic first? Um, on topic, all right, really quickly, so this is this will open next year. Yes. Remind us on the timeline for the rest of the facility, I mean, because it's a huge chunk that's that's getting done. But how sure. Is that Let me ask Sarosh to come up and talk about um, the timeline for all of it. The, and you'll remind me how many total acres we're dealing with. Sorry, a little bit over. Yeah, absolutely. So the first housing will deliver also at the end of probably at the end of next year early 25 and then the remainder will be in 25 and 26 and um, and then there is the north parcel which will be either thereabouts or a little thereafter and then just a quick follow-up on that the one thing that's distinct about the site that everybody's mentioned are the kind of like the cells where the water was held underneath mm -hmm. what's going to happen with those are these i mean i know there's a lot of talk about historic preservation the big uh, kind of silo things will remain but what about the underground cells underground cells sarosh i don't know the answer to that one all of the what you see is being preserved that let me ask sarosh if he could talk about what's underground yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the cells will be preserved, and there will be, like, an opportunity to go inside and look at it and look from the outside. And then um, I believe another cell will be preserved. Uh, that's where they were doing the D.C. water work. Uh, but the primary public attraction will be a cell that you can it's, – it's historically stabilized, and you can go in it and look at it. All right, now switching off topic because – uh-huh. I know. I'm feeling punchy today, apparently. Um, this is actually for DPR and DGS, if they could help out. The Wilson Aquatic Center opened up today again yeah. after quite a while of being yep. fixed up. Just wanted to get details on what exactly was done during this period of fix-up and what people could be looking forward to later this fall and the winter when you said you guys have to upgrade the site, the HVAC in the facility. Yeah, so um, the HVAC, we have a scope of work. Um, we have put a, c a procurement out. And we're just waiting on parts to come. Um, it's been a while, and so we're slated for the fall for those parts to come in. So we do understand, but we have uh, co to control the humidity in the space. So, yes. What was just done? Like, what was the project that was just finished up? The controlling of the humidity. Um, so that's what we did. We just put some things in place. You want to speak on it? Uh, sure, we were able to add additional uh, exhaust to the, the system to be able to pull the air. Some of the, the challenges that we've had is just recirculating and bringing in fresh air, especially towards a portion of the pool. Uh, so that was successful. We've passed inspection and we'll work with, again, DPR to hopefully maintain operations. And we have onboarded a contractor uh, to for the full replacement. Those are long lead item parts, and those are scheduled to arrive towards the latter part of this year. Uh, and as has been a pattern under Mayor Bowser's administration, we have upgraded Tacoma, built a new roof, an aquatic center, uh, a new roof and exhaust system, uh, HVAC system rather. Also, we've done the same at Deanwood and Turkey Thicket. We've had success when we've been able to redo some of what I would call the first generation of uh, aquatic centers that we've built in the city. We expect the same for Wilson. Thank you. And then last one, I swear on this one. This is more HVAC questions. Is there been a particular set of problems with HVAC across the city? Because a lot you hear issues in some of the schools that were rebuilt. You hear now, obviously, what happened at the Wilson Aquatic Center. Is this kind of a broader problem with HVAC that you? Well, have we to actually with have the tremendous success. I want to say, actually, within our last 12 to 18 months, uh, thanks to the mayor's investments, we now have preventative maintenance for our, all of our HVAC systems. We've started with the schools. It was very successful. Of course, you do have challenges, but when we have warmer days now, instead of uh, 10 to 15 sites, now there's just one or two where we have some challenges with. And we're also expanding this work beyond just DCPS. And FY24, thanks to almost $6 million in the mayor's uh, budget, we'll be able to expand preventative maintenance to DPR, uh, MPD, FEM sites, uh, health and human service sites, and across our portfolio. So really excited. We've turned the corner on HVACs, and we're making tremendous progress. Thanks. And I think something D Delano said um, is important when we think about Wilson and some of the other centers of that vintage. They're now 15 years old. Um, we sometimes think of them as being new because, you know, it's new. It's newer than it's fairly, we, but it's 15 years old. And so some of those systems are hitting their life cycles um, where they'll either need a major rehab or they'll need to be replaced. 
So that's always important. It's not the sexiest thing to talk about in the budget, but that's why we talk so much about DGS and not shaving a million here and shaving a million there um, because it really uh, impacts it. Um, that's not to say we haven't had a couple of systems that were lemons um, and have had, uh, we've had to go back and look at them. Yes. Hi, I'm Mary Claire Malloy with the Washington Post. And this development has had a lot of legal challenges and years um, that it's taken to do this. So what do you say to the critics who have been against the development and some of the activists? Well, I've had a lot to say to them, um, mostly that it, the argument that we weren't going to have a park here was always wrong because uh, we are going to have a, an amazing park. Um, I think the, the idea of holding up development that's going to create affordable housing and bring more jobs was also not good. Uh, and I, uh, but we're here now. And I think that we stand here with a project that we're all going to be proud of that, uh, as I mentioned, preserves historical structures uh, and has all of the other uses that people are looking for. <coughs> Any other questions? Sam. Does the protest at all affect the design uh, over here? I mean, um, uh, the protest, you know, again, I'm, I want to be positive and look forward, but Anytime you have um, big development, sometimes people think that it's going to have a bigger impact on them, um, so they try to block it. And I think that's um, what's happened. Um, and in the case of this low parcel, even people who didn't even live anywhere near it uh, were blocking progress. But when you walked around all these neighborhoods and knocked on doors, what people said is, yes, we want access to green space, but we want more amenities. And we think that these underused parcels that we're looking at just sitting there in the middle of a city that is experiencing a huge need for more affordable housing, everybody believed um, that that was uh, the wrong approach. Um, so we have dealt with each, and I, I have to acknowledge my lawyers and project managers and team at DEMPED, led by Sarosh Otpadwala in the Department of Real Estate, um, and the development team who hung in there to kind of fight down all of these um, protests. But in the, in the course of things, we made clear in our comprehensive plan um, the city's and I, certainly our administration's approach as building more affordable housing as a citywide policy initiative uh, that, that deserves great weight in any consideration. So, Mayor, you said it was 2016. I remember being here. I just don't remember the year. But you said it was 2016. I believe that's right. So that, that's a long time. That is. A, longevity has its privileges, as you know, Sam. <laughs> well, I'm glad to be around. <laughs> Me too. More than glad. I'm daggone happy about it. Um, but in all seriousness, because, you know, we, we're going to get to see this almost to the end, right, from start to finish. And so um, I'm proud of that. Mayor, have you heard that uh, they made an arrest on H Street? Apparently there have been a lot of break-ins there, and um, I understand there was an arrest uh, by MPD. I'll, I'll have to confirm that, Sam. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, everybody. Let's sign the meme.
Hey, Mark. Do we need the tour or are we doing the yeah, license? Yeah, we need to shoot, to spray that, yeah. and then all of these. Yeah, I got it. So are we doing this one? Or are we doing I'm doing both. You're oh. only at the other story. OK. Uh, are you using the, uh, the sound for the other stories? Is it the same stuff? No, I just you need to download it. OK. OK, but are you, you're not using any of this stuff. You've got that interaction with the mayor from the lab. Okay. Thank you.